Oh, there we I go. can't do wow. it. Wow. Yeah. You just finger fucked your <laughs> face. I think you just gave yourself the shocker, dude. You okay? Hope it clears up that cough. God. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Boobies, farts, boobies. Well, no need for profanity, guy. <laughs> you know this is a family show, right? It is now, huh? The Swiss Family Robinson. Hello. Ready, buddy? Let's do it. It's the theme music. Oh, you you gonna have a little sample? Sample it like a ch- dirty cheese platter at a Ramada Inn, buddy. <laughs> okay. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's one of the best theme songs in the history of podcasts. Speaking of sampling a cheese platter, <laughs> have you? Too soon. Is it too soon? I'm going to circle back to it then. Come back to I'm it. Gonna come put back a pin to in that, that story. I'm going to put a pin in it and come back to the sampling a cheese platter story. Uh, welcome, Adam Ray, to the Harland Highway podcast, ladies and schnurgle darglins. Um, great to have you here, bud. Great to be here, bud. Fucking just like sweet, tight. I'm going gonna, gonna to say ripe. And I'm going to say no. fucking uh, fl- fallopian. Sure. I don't even know why. Men don't have fallopian tubes, do they? Well. Don't cancel me. No, I got a little story about that coming you got a up. a fallopian yeah. tube story? Yeah. I mean, do you want to hear it? But let's put a pin in it. Okay. No, so, let's let's get to it now. Well, here's the thing. I, I have a secret, okay? We all have Garden? Se- <laughs> Whoa, way too soon. I'm going to have to put a pin in that and come back to it later. My wow. shitty secret garden story. Wow. <laughs> By the way, a great movie. Is it? Oh, such a good movie. Not a big garden movie guy. You're not? Garden State I did enjoy, so I guess I'll oh, take yeah. that back. Yeah, you got to take that way What back. was happening in this garden that was so secretive? And let me take a guess. There was a little boy, and yeah, he was probably pretty fat. And his dad had, uh, had come back from the war and said, hey, I got to tell you something. Uh... I brought back some Iraqi Twinkies, and that's code for a new mom. Bro, uh, it's and a t- secret. I can't say. You could, you could keep rambling, but I, ain't, the, I don't break a secret. The first rule of secret garden is don't talk about the, what happened in the garden. The secret. What happens in the garden stays in the garden. Well, okay. The, fa- the fat boy <laughs> is in the garden wearing Victoria's Secret. The worst beginning of a clue game ever. Right, and that's all. I'm, that's as much as I'm giving away. The secret garden involves Touché. a little fat boy in lingerie, <laughs> and it's a real fucking secret. Oh my god, are you I, okay? I watched that movie. Yeah, Did, was that a puke or a cough? No, I'm just allergic to bad movie trailers. <laughs> you should be allergic to fat boys in lingerie. So you should be. That's allergic what she to said. <laughs> Hello, put a pin in that fat boy. Pop him Pop and just him. leave the Pillsbury lingerie. style. Leave the lingerie. <laughs> Pop the fatty, leave the lingerie tonight Pop at the ten. Fatty. <laughs> that should be a new game show. Right after Wheel of Fortune, it's Pop the Fatty on NBC. Hi, I'm Mario Lopez. Yeah. Well, I don't think that was how he sounds, but you know how he sounds. Look it up if you don't believe me. Oh, that was dude. him. But do you have any secrets? And and this is the weirdest question because most people Ooh. would never answer. You know, answer it. But is is there a secret that maybe you sure? Really? Would Ooh. you share, or is it is it too top secret? It's well, a now, difficult question to ask. A secret, let's uh, define by Webster's Dictionary as a hot fatty in lingerie, right? Yeah. But I think truly a secret is something that you haven't told anybody. Right, right. Right? I think yeah, that's... Yeah, it is. That it's, you've, so it's, or you might have told somebody, but told them, don't you ever tell anyone else. It's a secret. You could share a secret. Which, by the way, most people, I think it's human instinct to, when you're told a secret, you're yeah. already fantasizing about the person's day you're about to make. <sighs> yeah. By telling them a little, little piece of something. It's also because, look, yeah. if you're a professional gabber like we are, yeah. and you're... Or you're not actually yeah. the. I would say the people who probably shit, gossip more, yeah, and divulge secrets that aren't theirs more are the people that are like sitting at dinners or wine mixers where they don't feel confident in their conversation skills. Yeah. So then they're just like, so somebody's like, you know, boy, though, it's, I'm so glad the sun's out, and you're like, yeah, hope it doesn't, hope it doesn't rain again. <laughs> Do you guys hear Emily's fucking mat now? And they're like, 
What? Yeah, I wasn't supposed to say anything. I think the tip off would have been the heavy perverted breathing. <laughs> okay, I think I think Emily's fucking everyone with that. <sighs> Sounded like a St. Bernard getting date raped by a can of sour cream and onion Pringles, man. <laughs> Sounds like alien fucking Donald Duck in a Denny's bathroom. What no, was I that would watch breathing? that. I would watch that. What was that breathing you I don't know. Doing? That's the guy who's nervous to, to you know, what did familiarize you st- himself. Who knows social- how to breathe? Like, what, did you study glory hole at DeVry or something? <laughs> What the hell? That's a guy sad. who's not as confident in his, you know, social uh, maneuvers. God, D- Darth <laughs> Vader whacking off in a laundry hamper. <sighs> <sighs> that was him coming. He just goes up just a little bit. Um, <laughs> did I get the job? Dude, I feel Hi, my name's Adam Ray, Adam Ray with ABC Talent. <laughs> wow, um, you should be on Papa <laughs> Fatty. <laughs> <laughs> oh Papa shit fatty. wait so wait so so my so what's your secret my yeah. secret is there one you would dare share no, no sure. pressure sure because this might be stuff your family or friends might might not even know i don't know <sighs> man i got a few Ooh. who doesn't that's what i mean oh man this is i got one i would that because when you brought up the whole secret thing i thought maybe i should share mine i'm I, i've never told anyone this but i'm not ashamed to share it especially sure. with a bud um okay cool yeah especially with a bud and, and new buds i mean i can go first if you want uh no i'll go first okay pushy uh <laughs> if you really if you did no, you go go the secret well, anger guy. Well, he, well here's what's always secret <laughs> Anger guy, Papa Fatty. <laughs> Sorry, that's secret. Slipped. Yeah, but that's for that secret. Slipped. That's secret uh, agent man, right? Yeah, is that what you were, uh, you were parroting? S- well, I don't like parrots, but I might have been crowing it. <laughs> ah! What's your old bit you used to do? Oh, Papa with the- Fatty. No, your fucking crow bit. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to do a bit. Oh, every every bird in the bird kingdom, it's like a beautiful song. It's like. <laughs> Then you get to the crow and it's like, ah! It's like they had a tracheotomy or something. Like, get some throat cancer pills or something. You're you're doing the condensed version of it, though, because when you would do it, you would really build build out this, like, really sweet musical, like the birds. It's a crisp morning. You're looking out the window. You know, yeah, yeah. And then here comes fucking, ah! (laughs) Well, that sounded like a construction worker falling off a... A brand new target being built or something, but close. Thank you. Finally, somebody gets my impressions. Will you do me a favor? Sure. Go pop a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's my new saying, man. It's a really fun, Fuck. descriptive, you, visual. You came up with a good one. Yeah, bro. That's, that one's coming back, and wow. it's coming in hard, and it's wow. it's not going anywhere. Yeah. All right, my secret. Yeah, what is it? I used to... Um, work at albertson's the grocery store okay and um there's a two-part secret here oh boy i um We're getting the bra and the panties when i was 15 i got a hand job from a girl who was 19 in maybe even 20 who worked in the service deli <coughs> yeah so wait I so think that's was, not she, legal. She worked in the. She gave you a hand job. She gave me she worked, potato salad first. Well, I, clearly she's familiar with handling meats. We'll be right back. Let's go pop a fatty. <laughs> so wait, the deli counter girl gave you a hand job. Yeah, and you were clearly underage. I think fifteen's underage, right? 15's but I guess under, as a dude, you're just like. As a dude, you're like. Bring it. I I deserve it almost, <laughs> right? I'm 15. What's the way? Yeah. I can't drive, but I you know I can well, you know steer what the, my. The interesting thing is back then, and and when you're a kid, this I is didn't 90 yeah 97 yeah, 98. I didn't know that. Like if an older woman like had a fling with me or whatever, 
I didn't, my parents never sat me down and said, now Harland, if anyone touches you that's over this age, it's illegal. Yeah. Like, I mean, clearly you, you knew that you couldn't have like a little kid, but I didn't know, I didn't know about the whole age thing when, no. you're, when you're 12, 13 years old, unless your parents tell you, because yeah. they didn't tell us at school. Especially grocery store etiquette. Like my yeah. mom was never like, if the service deli lady tries to jiggle your balls. Wow. Don't let her do it. Because she's got a butcher knife and it ain't going to end well for you. You've already been circumcised. Wow. Unless you're looking to run it back. I wasn't circumcised. You know what I was? They popped a fatty. <laughs> That's what every, every rabbi says when he does it. I popped the fatty. <laughs> it's all done. We popped the fatty. If the show succeeds so well in the States, does it then go over to uh, Europe and then there's new uh, knockoff versions of Papa Fatty? What would that be? Well, you were doing the Dutch accent right there, no, right? No, that was the rabbi. Oh. <laughs> you Jewish, you should have known. How dare you disgrace your own people. Did you meet my rabbi at my wedding? I did leave your rabbi, he popped the fatty. Am okay. I doing it right? I heard a little bit of the upswing. There yeah. is a little bit of the how Jewish. Did, how would a Jewish guy say pop the fatty? Pop a fatty. Oh. I go okay. older. If I'm doing a Jew, I right. do. You... I do the older like... I'm going to get some meatloaf, I'm going to get some gefilte fish, yeah. and then I'm going to bring it home, we're going to make some brisket, and hopefully I'll get a fatty in a lingerie, and I'll pop it. I'll pop them. You're doing the full fiddler on the roof, Jewish sure. guy. Well, that's, yeah. that was my intro to the, yeah. the Jewish character, was fiddler on the roof. Okay, so get back to, you're in the, you're in the Albertsons, uh, where did I'm the I'm getting some job... Mac salad and a, and a, and a tug. And, but uh, where did this happen? In her car. Oh, so it wasn't in the Albertsons. I mean, it was in the parking lot. Yeah. Carts were being collected right around us. So you had that clanging, almost like erotic wind chimes. I need it now, too. I need it now oh, to yeah. finish the job in 2023. I got conditioned to need it as my first one. It's my first one. I saw a homeless guy the other day rubbing two uh, shopping carts together so hard he started a campfire. Go on. That's it. I popped a fatty. <laughs> uh, I saw a homeless guy under six blankets on Oscar Sunday. Um, looking like he was doing no arm push ups, and then upon further inspection, oh no, he's trying to make the sidewalk come. Yeah, and he was going to town real hard with a big smile on his face. That's what stood out. Not the dry humping of the uh, sidewalk, yeah. but he was like, it was like he knew Brendan Fraser was about to win an Oscar for deep throating a bucket of KFC in a fat suit. Yeah. He was so happy. He was like, and he yeah. was like, he was like going to that. And and my wife looks over because I was like. I go, oh, man. And she goes, what? And I go, don't look. She looked. Saying don't look, yeah, you, you always look. look. And she she was not happy that she looked. Yeah, on the sidewalk. What's that game called? Step on a crack, fuck your mother's back. That's it, yeah. I well, saw Spider-Man laying some brick the other day. Go on. He was just stuck against the wall, <laughs> humping it till it fucking bled. I saw a guy. <laughs> Wow. I saw a guy, no <clears throat> no joke, dressed as SpongeBob and a guy dressed as Jack Sparrow once on Hollywood Boulevard outside yeah. that LA Fitness that yeah. we played yeah, racquetball yeah. at. And, and I'd never seen these two worlds collide. So yeah. I was just like, hell yeah. <laughs> what story could be transpiring where Jack Sparrow and SpongeBob yeah. are getting into it? And the guy dressed as SpongeBob, no joke, at the top of his lungs goes, God damn it, Matt, give me my fucking string cheese. <laughs> And I was wow. like, is that his catchphrase? I haven't wow. seen the show. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I was in a grocery store on Hollywood Boulevard once, and no word of a lie. I came around an aisle, <laughs> and coming around the other aisle was Superman awesome. and Wonder Woman. Oh, my God. Because these people, they stand out on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, they get hungry. And they pose, they pose with tourists for pictures. So these are real stories. And I, there I am in, like, the, you know, the canned goods aisle, and there's su Superman grabbing and, a can of Progresso. Woman. Yeah, it's just like hilarious. <laughs> asking if they, yeah, asking you know Wonder Woman, do I have enough to get you know beef and cheddar, or yeah. should I just get tomato? Yeah, do we do we need uh, do we need <laughs> anything else for the the lasagna tonight, baby? <laughs> It's like, you know what? You're Superman. Fly through the roof Fly of an olive roof. garden and take what you want. <laughs> yeah, fucking. They just <laughs> they just take donations too. They don't. They uh, do. Yeah. I'd like to donate to their face with kryptonite <laughs> pills and watch that guy dry up like a piece of bacon on Porky Pig's ass. <laughs> God. We'll be right back. Pop a fatty. <laughs> so there I am getting tugged away. Okay, so secret <clears throat> one is a, hell, a hand job in the deli department. And I was not comfortable. You, you weren't. Want, you want to act like you've been there before, but I was like, oh, oh, oh. She's like, I haven't even started yet. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. You know, every kid at that age, yeah. too, when they're getting 
when they're getting tugged at, yeah. you sound like, you don't sound cool. You want in my head, I was like, yeah. oh, I was like, you ever seen a fifteen year old wiener before? Oh, you know, and yeah. uh, I didn't say that. I thought that. Yeah, and uh, did she know how old you were? Great question. Probably not. If we were to check the tape, I looked older. I think I've always been a little carried myself in a yeah. Because you've 15, always have the stubble sort of thing. Yeah. I started shaving in, at twelve in sixth grade. Yeah, but she not because you were I older. Yeah, and even when I I was I think pretty tan at that point. So like old gals that would have me bag their groceries were like, "What part of Cuba are you from?" And I was right. like, "Right." Did you do this though? And I hope you did this. Take advantage of the old ladies. No, but you got the deli meat girl sitting yeah. there. She works at the deli counter. She's obviously you guys are engaged in something. You finish. You look her right in the eyes and say, "Are we going to see each other again?" Because I'm not a piece of meat. Oh, I wish I did. Oh God, God, I wish I did. Where were you? You were there for every other hand job after that. Why couldn't you be there for the first one? And then she says. Everything's meat to me. Pickle face. No, she didn't say that. She goes, grab a number. Next. Well, She's yeah. like, wait a second. <laughs> grab a number. Some other guy gets in the car. <laughs> wow, you're good at your job. Yeah. Oh, you're she's, serving up slime. She's a true <laughs> deli lady right there. Grab a number. And the deli ladies, oh, you yeah. know, uh, historically speaking, are known to be a little, you know, you look at Chris Farley's Lunch Lady Land. Yeah. People think of the deli gal, the cafeteria woman, as being yeah. kind of an older, slubbier, sippier, just, you know, just pounding away with beans and yeah. brats, you know, but she, man, she was, she was gorgeous. I had a deli lady once. Go on. In India. A new deli lady? Correct. <laughs> Worst yeah. game show ever. <laughs> Do me a favor. Put on your seatbelt. Put on your leg braces. Walk out that door and go pop a fatty. <laughs> That's the fun game of it. Is getting a big build up to what you got to do. Grab, <laughs> grab a couple of wine coolers. Go down to the hot tub store. Get some chlorine. Call my stepdad and tell him to pop a fatty. <laughs> I don't know if it's a five things. Is it a five finger a five. discount? That's yeah, good. it's a fiver. Okay, so the deli That's the first tug secret. was one. What's the second secret? <clears throat> so my friend John Sherrar, R.I.P. Okay, um, he worked at Albertsons with me, and we used to steal beer. Okay, but on top of that, there would be nights where I'd be bagging groceries. He'd be checking you know the a checker yeah which by the way i i filled in to be a checker for like maybe two weeks i didn't even know you played hockey go on <laughs> so i'm bringing can i'm bring, i'm bringing i'm bringing the items through when you're checking by the way yeah. it's tough to make small talk 40 seconds to four minutes you're just like hey chapstick yeah well you got to keep those lips hydrated hey toaster strudels i'm more of a pop tart guy hey lube what do you do to those pop tarts later paper or plastic can you do that again? I just have to add something, like you're bagging. Sure. Hey, chapstick. Yeah, wow, that's it. Oh, toaster strudels, nice. Hey, bagel bites. Uh, yeah, those are good. The pepperoni kind of my favorite. Hey, lube. Wow. I just had to add the sound. The sound effect, yeah. Like, I you, thought you were going to do a beep. No, you just laid it up for I me. I did, yeah. And then, can you do a fast one? Yeah. Wow, look at this. Eggs, bread, milk, Diet Pepsi, condoms, butt plugs, scissors. <laughs> what was the last one? It's butt plugs and scissors. Go pop a fatty. <laughs> How sharp is that butt plug? Go plug a fatty. Go plug a fatty if you dare. Okay, so wait, what was the second one? We didn't even get to the answer. So, you were swiping things. By the way, the let me just say this real quick because now it's drawing my memory. The Faster. paper, the paper, the paper or plastic yeah. question was always so baffling to customers. Like when I'd be oh, like, paper or plastic? Because yeah. you'd see people that would try to like ration with themselves where they'd go like, all right, well, plastic, I don't want to. I know I shouldn't get a plastic bag because uh, yeah. they'll choke hold the dolphins. Yeah. I shouldn't get paper because I believe in trees, yeah. you know, and, uh, but, you know, but also, you know, I got a lot of bagel bites and I, I've been doing all my push ups, So the bag clearly will tear on the walk home. It was like, sir, I asked you paper or plastic. I yeah. didn't ask, can I pick up your kids from home or yeah. can I bathe your wife? You know, but they were always so confused. Oh, I just, I, I, I heard bathe the wife and I, <laughs> Kind of went somewhere. 
know Where'd where. you go? I think I went to Papa Fatty <laughs> Town, you know. Can you imagine if somebody asked if they could bathe your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Just walked up on the street. Yeah. Hey, man, bathe your wife for a dollar? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'd do it. I don't even want a night with your wife in decent proposal style. Remember Robert Redford and oh, Demi Moore? Yeah. Great movie. You know what I'd want them to do if it was a homeless guy that just walked out? Can I bathe your wife? I'd say, yeah, if you do it kit, kitten style. What's that? You know when a cat just licks its, it bathes its kitten and oh, licks? Oh, yeah. So you get a homeless guy with three teeth and a corn nibble in his <laughs> beard just licking your wife clean? <laughs> yeah. All right, babe. Um... Uh, <laughs> moment of silence yeah. maybe for her yeah she's not making it through that Shh. Shh. this moment of silence is brought Shh. to you by Doritos Shh. you know how you end a moment of silence oh you know you pop a fatty Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's not getting old yet. It's not getting old yet. It never will. So John Sherrard is working at the checkout stand. Here we and go. I come through. By the way, the never-ending story. I'm good episode. at this. Yeah. Even never-ending story had an ending. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I love it. So, uh, so, so, <laughs> if you could sip louder next time, that'd be great. Uh, I'm sitting there about to clock out. It's about midnight. And right. I come through with uh, some deodorant, some French bread, maybe a pie. And what's the last one? <laughs> Loop. Dunkaroos. Scissors. Pop. <laughs> a fatty. Sorry. Pop a fatty sauce. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Got, <coughs> got some pop a fatty sauce. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you okay? Yeah, I just smoked some pot last night for the first time in a couple weeks. Holy clam dip. Took a sabbatical, but I'm back on it. So yeah. um, he goes, uh, He goes. all right, deodorant, French bread, Pepsi, toothpaste. He goes, oh, uh, did you want uh, any of these? And he starts grabbing stuff off the, off the uh, the things, and then he goes and he grabs some beer. We have cameras not installed at this point. Yeah, in the this store. is like early 80s? No, this is 90... 90- Seven ninety eight. Okay. Just no stores had security cameras yet. Yeah, because they still trusted fucking people. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And the world wasn't uh, free for all. It wasn't. Yeah. And, and there was, um, there were no cell phone cams, I think. And yeah, 97, 98. No, there were no cell phone cams. No, there weren't even cell phones. No. And so everyone's just kind of, yeah, trusting the honor system. If you did, I did have to chase someone out the store once that was stealing, what were they stealing? Batteries. Oh, my, okay. my boss was like, get them. Yeah. And I was just like, Fuck, what do you want me to, like this, you know, it's batteries. Let's let them go. Yeah, um, I mean, everyone has the right to a vibrator. That's what, and that's what I said. Yeah, and then and and then I didn't get him, and my boss bought a vibrator to teach me a lesson. And let's just say that was my last day at Albertsons, and my first day. At least it was a good day. Yeah, and I got paid a hundred. It was like one of those test things where they go, "Will you watch this show and give us feedback?" Mm-hmm. He tried the vibrator out to be like, yeah. "What speed is your favorite?" I'm yeah. doing a, you know. I digress. Yeah. So John then grabs a bunch of other shit, yeah. runs it all the way through, and um, and probably ch- ran me through about, I don't know, five $600 worth of stuff that night, bagged it all up, put it in the car. Like free? Yeah. And we did that a handful of times. Yeah. Just a, so I guess theft, but yeah. but not just a one-time deal. It was We did it quite a few times where it was just zoom, zoom. And, and we also, we felt like we were owned it. Yeah, you deserved it. You deserved it. Yeah, you were owed it. Owed it. What yeah. did I say? You said owned it. And you did own it. Well, we did you, own once it. Once you stole it, it We was felt yours. like we were owed it, yeah. We um, we just, because there were no real benefits well, at working at Albertsons. I yeah. guess, well, there was <laughs> service now. deli and jobs. Yeah, and <clears throat> jobs and free food. I don't know if it gets any better. It I really does What do you want, uh, Paris Hilton <clears throat> to run through the wall with a fucking bag of twat juice? Would have been nice. <laughs> Would have been nice. Wow. <laughs> There's, by the way, Gwyneth Paltrow, if you're listening, oh, from, from Pussy Candles to Twat Juice, Shh, Nelly wait. had pimp juice, The Rock's got Zoa, yeah. hey, Paris Hilton, that's your energy drink. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Wow. Take a minute right now and think of a world, in a world, Ugh. 
where Paris Hilton is trying to monopolize and build her brand. She's got lip gloss. She's got clothes. Here it comes. She's a DJ. She's popping fatties. And here she is coming out with a drink to give kids an extra boost of motivation on the day-to-day. Hi, guys. I'm Paris Hilton. And we're all struggling with those days where you're like, oh, is it Thursday again? Well, time to turn Thursday into Friday with twat juice. It tastes like rubber bands, but but it smells like Mountain Dew. Wow. Cut. What? Wow. Yeah. And then, you Sold. know. Yeah. How many Sold. cases are you buying from I Albertsons? Wanna give me a fucking pallet full. <laughs> Get your forklift back up to my house, drop them off in front <laughs> of the driveway, and then pop a fucking fatty on the way out, buddy. So thousands of dollars worth of merchandise wow. stolen, yeah. And I, I felt... Also, some of you were like, oh, that's a secret? Yeah, man. Yeah. Thousands of dollars worth of shit. And also at, yeah. what, 16, 17? Yeah. Steal it, like, I don't know, stealing anything, you know, was uh, was a big deal. Oh, Yeah. And just, what, what what's interesting about that setup? It was almost like it probably felt like you weren't stealing because you didn't have to hide from anything. It was totally. all in high, in plain sight yeah. type of thing. But nobody <clears throat> nobody knows that. But John Sharar and maybe a buddy of mine that I told wow. later in life. You're like the original <clears throat> Ocean's Eleven almost. Oh, I was George Clooney stealing French bread yeah. and chapstick instead of oh, wow. you know millions of dollars. My mom. <sighs> My mom knew that I stole once because I was at uh, Safeway, the grocery store. Yeah. I got banned from a uh, QFC. I got banned from a QFC. One, actually, that we... QFC is a grocery store we went to when we were doing Flushang in, uh, in Bellevue at the parlor yeah, yeah, day. Yeah. It was th- that chain of grocery stores. I went there once, and I was. it was one of the 30th... Probably the 28th time I've ever gotten really high. And this was freshman year of college, 2001. And I went back to Seattle. And a buddy of mine from college was there. And his friend, we hung out. I got way too high. I went to the grocery store. I went down the cookie aisle. And I opened one bag of cookies from from 30 different bags of cookies. And then I uh, grabbed a thing of French bread and a liter of Pepsi. And I walked. And I, I, I started walking. I... Oh, wait, no, I, I bought that, and then two security guards grabbed me, and they're like, do you want to come pay for those cookies? And I was like, oh, shit. And then I just started, I looked at them, and I go, I've been having a bad year. And they were like, what? Took me upstairs. They're like, taking all my info. I'm like, am I going to go to jail? They go, and as I'm saying that, by the way, I'm like, am I going to go to jail? Wow. I'm still eating the cookies. And the sipping, the huh? guy was like, stop eating the cookies. <laughs> He's like, dear God, man, have some restraint. I was like, Sorry, man. Guy. He goes, uh, no, you've been cooperative. You're not going to go to jail, but you're probably not coming back to this QFC for a while. And I was like, and I go home and my mom is holding a letter and she's like on the verge of tears and she goes, you're stealing bread and Pepsi from grocery stores. I'm working four jobs so we can afford bread. And I was like, I was fucking high. And she didn't know I smoked pot yet. Because I had to tell her, I was like, I'm not a thief. I'm not Aladdin. Well, do you have any more stories where it involves a <laughs> loaf of French bread? I mean, every story tonight, there's you snuck in a French bread reference. What's with you? And can you just get a regular American loaf? You need the long cylindrical whale cock yeah, bread? Because they're already buttered, man. Jeez. <laughs> so fancy. You're the fanciest thief I've ever met. Thank you. God. <laughs> well, let me tell you my secret. All right. I, uh, I always wanted to have a kid. Okay. Now, you know me. I don't have kids, no. right? Or Be- so, so you thought. So I would... <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, damn. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Hi, son. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you. It's been a minute. I know. I wish it was a lot longer. <laughs> so I fucking hate you, you fat <laughs> <laughs> I should have popped you years ago, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> Got any Game Boys? <laughs> Gay what? <laughs> God, easy there, fly boy. And scene. And scene. You always wanted, you always wanted kids. What happened? So I always wanted to have a, a kid, a, a boy. You yeah, know? Really? Yeah. And you crush being a dad. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to adopt because yeah. we know how that goes. Sure. Isn't it weird how people, whenever you say adopted, there's always this stigma? Like there is. So many people always think immediately, child of a serial killer. Yeah. Or ch- a Where'd crack you get baby. that from? Yeah. yeah. Where'd you get that yeah. from? 
But it, it's, you know, Bill Clinton was adopted. Oh, yeah. Will Ferrell was adopted. My like, sister was adopted. Was she really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's funny the stigma that's attached to adopted, though, right? And it's such a honorable, it's a fucking, and it's a huge process. It's not easy yeah, at right, all to right. get a kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know. You can't just go into a bag, <laughs> you should paper, be able, plastic. You should be able to. Should be. Probably you should be able will. to. You should be able to what? What, what in, 20, in twenty years? In t- no, in today's society, you should oh, be yeah. able to just have a kid wherever you want to get a kid. Yeah, I wasn't being a fat kid had its advantages. People were like, "Were you teased?" I was like, "Yeah, but never abducted because I was yeah. too big, too yeah, big to steal." Gonna, yeah, you just pop the tires of a white van, <laughs> put them in. <laughs> That was the original Papa Fatty. <laughs> wow. Fat kid trying to be stolen. Fuck. Those tires ain't, they don't have, they can't carry the fucking cheese its that are gurgling around that fucking ass. And when you came out, you were the original Papa Smurf because you were still blue. <laughs> they did think I was going to be a girl that couldn't see my wiener on the sonogram. I was going to be Rachel Ray. Oh, shoot. Yeah. And I do mean shoot <laughs> the baby. <laughs> Can you imagine if I was living in Rachel Ray's shadows? Or in Rachel Ray. <laughs> There's enough room. <laughs> Today we're making spaghetti lasagna in four minutes. <laughs> Boom, it's done. I don't know. I don't do voices. Go ahead. You will. <laughs> uh, so, so I, I, you know, got a little gray in the hair, and I didn't know that a, that a child was in the, in the, in the cards for me, yeah. you know? And uh, I don't know if you've been watching the news lately in the last, like, few months or so. Maybe yes about no. the last year. Sure. Apparently, men <clears throat> can have babies now. Get the fuck out of here. Like yeah. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger and Jr.? They just said men can give birth. This is what the narrative is on the news. You oh. watch some of these interviews. They're saying, you know, women are, even women, they're being asked point blank, can men have babies? And they're going, yeah. And so okay, I wasn't aware of it. So I started taking like ample supplies of, you know, fertility pills after consulting with my optometrist or whatever. What's a baby doctor called? Uh, OBGYN. No, thanks. I'm straight. <laughs> Wait. No, but, but you know, whatever a, a ballologist or whatever. Definitely I, not it. Yeah. What Keep is going. It? Gar- 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 good. Gargamel. Gargamel. French bready. Gargamel ish. Whatever a baby doctor is. Sure. I consulted a pediatric with, physician. No, thanks. I'm busy for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Guy gives two secrets and he wants me to take a vacay with him. <laughs> so. <laughs> what is a baby doctor called? I don't give a fuck at this point. <laughs> fuck him. I was at Albertsons, all right? <laughs> fuck it. Oh. I got a free baby consultation at Albertson. <laughs> okay, right? okay, sounds legit. So, so, so I'm on these fertility pills. Good. And dude, I got preggers, and I won't say who the who the father is, but it was somewhere at a truck stop north of California, roughly Bakersfield area. Sure. Yeah. And uh, dude, uh, I had a, I had a little boy, and. Uh, and it was so interesting because as he got a little older, I was waiting for his first words. And I thought he was going to be like, oh, daddy, or I love you. And I, he finally, I looked in his eyes and he said, I want to be a girl. <sighs> and this is the world we live in nowadays. So I went through all that trouble to have a boy. <laughs> you know, I went and got pregos. Yeah. I had the fertility pills, did all the things you got to do to have a child. Sure. And I wanted a boy specifically. I got one. <laughs> And, you know, as soon as it could open its mouth, I want to be a girl. So I got a boy, girl, boy. Wow. That's my secret. (laughs) Pretty tight, huh? You know, what's great about that secret is... um... What? Whoa. Father? (sighs) (laughs) Oh, God. The deli meat guy's back. (laughs) For second helpings. <laughs> um, great secret, man. Great secret. But speaking of, of <laughs> this is what I was going to say, but it doesn't go into anything. Just speaking of nothing, let me just go to the next topic. I thought I could segue. You thought I could segue. I no need for I it. I just came to a wall. Sometimes. So speaking of. Sometimes you used to parkour into some bushes. Get up and walk the other way. What's parkour? You know parkour? 
you know those kids that would start it became popular i'd say about let's say about eight ten years ago i think maybe pre-bucket challenge ice bucket challenge kids were like jumping almost like kids that were trying to be like spider-man they'd like jump off a sidewalk onto a like staircase yeah more like idiots yeah but then there were some videos of people doing it off of like high-rise buildings and stuff same yeah bonkers and if they didn't fall to their death a lot of them totally injured themselves oh broke all their bones clavicles pubic hairs and oh. ass bone everything was shattered yeah there's a, there's a bunch of those videos i don't know if a jackass inspired it but it was just people skateboard kids it just yeah it became a, a fad but it like, wasn't jackass. it was just people on on instagram and tiktok <clears throat> trying to one-up each other and yeah. get attention yeah and it, it blows my mind it's like for three seconds of attention that the whole world population will glaze over in the blink of an eye, yeah. you lost the ability to walk. Totally. You broke your spine. Yeah. You you can't walk on one leg. That's, you yeah. lost an eye. Yeah. For what, you idiot? That's a lack of smarts I can't understand. Yeah. But also, yeah, who knows where... Where do you think that comes from? Is that a lack of attention or is that like a need for speed like they're, they're are they adrenaline junkies or were they not uh you no, know congratulated because adrenaline can come from from anything they want to capture that one moment and where, with their 15 where, seconds of where fame. they're the star and everyone goes oh my god look at that guy yeah but it's they're not shooting a movie that lands on the turner classic movie network <gasps> they're, they're they're the blink of an eye for some guy sitting in a subway who's depressed probably going home to eat a a bag of fucking cheese puffs and then hang himself. Oh, that fucking kid did three twists in the air and broke his spine. <laughs> Goodbye, world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sure, yeah. Like, you're, you're not leaving any legacy behind. Totally. And not only that kid, but, you know, movie stars and actors have a long career. Yeah. You got three seconds of twirling around on a flagpole with a, you know, bag of fucking Fritos hanging out of your ass. Which and say no, it's over is, is an is an impressive feat. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's well, just it's over. I'm not rewatching it over and over again. Uh, it doesn't lead to a book deal. Let me it ask. Does, you, well, yeah. Not with that attitude. Well, let me ask you this: yeah. leaving a legacy. You said yeah. that's I I uh, that stood out. Is that if you're in any business, do you think that should be like your um, I don't know your your focus, your intent in in trying to be as um, you know, skilled at what you're doing is like, you know, Jim Henson, uh, my, uh, one of my heroes who created the Muppets had this great quote where he's like, I want to leave the world better than when I entered it. Yeah. Uh, um, I think a legacy, I want my existence to have made the world a better place than when I, yeah. th- when I leave it basically, which I feel like is a, you know I'm saying? I want to contribute. I want to do something to, and I feel like you definitely did that obviously. Um, but well, I think what a legacy means is that you leave something that sort of resonates in perpetuity, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't, like the movie Citizen Kane, it did things that had never been done with right. film and camera work and script and act, what Orson Welles did with Citizen Kane. And p- film historians will go back to the end of time and reference that movie because it's, it's a legacy movie. right? And in creating that, he created a timeless piece of what, he was given his gifts and his contribution to filmmaking and what he left for the world to continue to learn from. Cause if you watch that movie, even today, it blows most movies out of the water by yeah. today's standards yeah. because it's, it's such a masterpiece. <clears throat> and so without sounding pompous and egotistical on behalf of everyone, cause this is a all encompassing ac- uh, answer uh, without a legacy, you're just leaving ghosts behind. Mm. And ghosts you can't see. Ghosts are memories. Ghosts are maybes and what ifs. Yeah. And and it's sort of like that's the thing with stand-up. We do that. It's like you can do 5 million shows in your lifetime, and half of those could be to sold-out Manhattan Square Gardens or the Staples Center or whatever. But with no recording of them, they're ghosts. They're gone. And so unless you leave a film special or a movie or a tv show it just vanishes into the ether you know what i mean like george carlin and richard pryor and steve martin and charlie chaplin and all the comedy greats didn't have anything on celluloid or video or in the digital space yeah 
they'd just be ghosts, you know what I mean? And so these guys like Jerry Lewis and Buster Keaton and all the great comedians leave a legacy behind. And so it sounds egotistical, but legacy is extremely important. And if you don't have that kind of in your head when you when you make your plan in life, then you're sort of just kind Floating. of putting in time a little bit. Yeah. You know, you're, you're getting away with making a living maybe, and, and maybe you're having a great show in Seattle that weekend or a great show in New York. But if there's no kid down the road that can pull something off the internet or read a book or, or see what you did and it's tangible, then you can't really leave a legacy. So it, it sounds, again, sort of conceited, but I think you've got to want to leave a legacy. And, and I think these people that do leave one, regardless of whether it's their intent or not, somewhere in the back of their head, they must know it. And, oh, yeah. And they must have a drive. You know, even, even guys like Einstein with his mathematical equations must have known he would leave a legacy behind. So sure. I, I think it's extremely important. And if Good it's answer. not in your, if it's not kind of in your box of weapons, then it's almost like, I feel like you're spinning your wheels a little bit. Yeah, I think even a guy like Einstein probably was hoping that he would, you know, influence people with yeah. his way of thinking, right? And and go, I'm, I want to, anybody I think in the creative space is hoping to impact something, yeah. right? And and have it spawn something else. Any space, whether <laughs> it's the, the medical space, the scientific space. Right. I mean, ev everything leads to another thing, but... I, th I think a legacy is is super um, important. I think I think that's part of a lot of people's drive. And and trust me, you're lucky if you leave a legacy. Mm. A lot of people can <clears throat> be rich or famous or accomplish a lot of things, but but to to be one of those people that in the future someone types in Charlie Chaplin or Albert Einstein, it's it's a very you know select group that make it to to legacy, and and some might leave that much, and some, but it's 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 an important thing that maybe we don't think about a lot. And leaving a legacy, I feel like, is different than just being famous for. Oh, absolutely. Like, because you know you could have never done stand up. <clears throat> and you've been fortunate enough, but also created your own good luck and put yourself in a place to, to take advantage of the opportunities that have come your way. But it's like your catalog of work on screen is in a place now where every everybody like living knows of you because of like... Of me? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I'd say that uh, without question. It's very cool that you have uh, things that have... it like. Even if you just look at your uh, scene in Dumb and Dumber, right? Right, yeah. That, is, that movie is so iconicized in the zeitgeist of comedy culture. Yeah, it's a legacy <clears throat> movie. A 1,000%. Yeah. But your scene, every, everybody, and we've talked about this before, and uh, you know, just the origins of all that and the noise that you made and, <clears throat> and, and how it came to be. Yeah. But that is something that... Even if you haven't seen the movie, which is a rare group of people, people, and I've even been in this position where I can't remember where I was, but bringing up and and it was somebody who was a you know casual comedy fan, yeah. and they knew they knew uh, Harlan Williams. I see your name, and then they're like, "Oh, is that?" And then as soon as I pull your picture up, they were like, "Oh yeah," and then they started listing uh, all these things. Oh wow! So so what I'm saying is that like to get to a point to where you're like universally, <clears throat> if I start crying, universally. Um, acknowledged but enjoyed is yeah. uh, you've done it in your own way. It's very cool. Well, I think, <clears throat> thank you. That's a very huge compliment. Oh, yeah. But, oh, you, you know it. Thank you. Yeah, thank man. you, man. But I, I think legacy also plays into more than just accomplishments. Totally. There, 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 there's the personal legacy you, you leave behind that's hopefully attached to the compliments that this was perhaps a kind or giving or loving person that yeah. went with all the acronyms and and not always you know a lot of artists and scientists and and people that seem to excel can sometimes be temperamental and have odd quirky oh yeah personalities so sometimes it's not intentional but but you know you you hope someone you know like Abraham Lincoln who leaves a legacy as as a he was a president but look at the legacy he did you know abolishing slavery yeah. and bring, like like it it, it there 
there's different levels to the legacy. But yeah, it, it's it's uh, like Elon Musk is you know looking to to oh change God. change the game. Yeah, but like maybe let's say, and he's done a lot of great stuff. But like maybe ten years from now, he's like. You smoking? I want to make it so that spaceships are fueled by diarrhea. And I think Taco Bell's already done that guy. Taco who? Taco Bell, my friend. Don't pretend you haven't eaten there. Because I've seen you <laughs> in line behind the fatties. <laughs> and I know you popped a few. They call me Double Decker for a reason. Why is that? You fuck on a bunk bed? Who told you? Your wife. She was on the bottom. At least last time. What are you smoking, by the way? Shut the fuck up. I'm not finished. <laughs> Guy's smoking a Twizzler. I don't know what that was. I think it was a mouse's asshole. It just, just never ended. Oh, Speaking of, of um, Elon Musk, dude, Please. what's your thoughts on AI? Because now, if you go on YouTube, he's, he's got this robot coming out. Would Hard. you would you do it? Does it scare you? What's AI? Happening? I've seen a lot of AI uh, yeah. riffraff out there. Yeah. As far as you know. Will Sasso just made a full Tom Brady stand-up special through AI. Oh, they, he like, did? They took like footage and interviews and then stand-up stuff and, yeah. and had AI write a stand-up special as Tom Brady, what? which is a little terrifying. Was it funny? I haven't listened to it yet. I heard a, a few actually bits on the Pat McAfee show. They played it, and it was actually, it sounded like him. Yeah. And it was like, it was, uh, it was too real, I'll say that. Wow. <clears throat> Uh, I've I've heard Wait, that who who delivered the the comedy material that a through computer? a Tom Brady voice through a Tom they Brady took voice. interviews footage all this stuff and then what? and then yeah and then I've heard some AI stuff that uh, you know they can now detect tumors and cancer stuff that that was you that know, part of the break, special yes that was Hilarious. how he clo- that's how he closed he said someday Hilarious. someday. Um, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. But the, the, the robot stuff scares me a little bit. But before we get into that, that that's frightening to know. Like, let's be honest, as stand-up comedians, oh, yeah. to write material, you can write this material, and then to find the A-list jokes. Oh, yeah. If people find, are going to start doing that, to, how do you fact check that, I guess? If you well, will. no, what I'm trying to say is it's not easy to come up with material. Comedians rifle through material let's say you tell 40 jokes in three months three of them might make it to your a-list that you then use in your act yeah so what chance do we have if a computer can literally write a new hour of material in 10 minutes every 10 minutes yeah terrifying what is that that's a bit weird to i've never thought of it until now it's a tough pill to swallow it definitely i don't know if yeah i don't know there's still you still can't I th- think you can still never replace the like live in the flesh. Yeah, no, you can't. Performance. It's you why can't. people still want to go back to the movie theater. It's why I know they're trying to get this thing going with uh you know, headsets and VR watching shows from your home and being able to be- it's just not the same. There might be pe- there's a handful of people that probably don't ever want to leave the house and wear goggles but it's like it's just You uh, know what's scary though before you go on? Cuz you just said what we always say. Oh, there's no way you can ever replace it. It's just, it's never going to be the same. And we both immediately just went, oh, yeah. But in today's world, yeah, like fast forward to 50 years from now, even 30 years. You're now, right. I mean, I, I don't want it to be that, but I won't be surprised if there is something that's way better than any human could do. That's yeah. what's scary. Yeah, like, you're right. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a... Uh, some kind of a hologram or a robot that you can press a button and he's five times as funny as Jim Carrey and he's doing backflips on your kitchen counter. And wow, because of what we as humans have already done, yeah, right? So it's like, like, why wouldn't we, why would you put it past humans to create something better than humans? Well, and then look at look at the history of comedy from the physicalness of Buster Keaton to Laurel and Hardy to Jim Carrey to Jerry Lewis to, you know, everyone always finds these new, Could, these new nuances and yeah. faces and we go, oh, wow, that's a new kind of avenue for comedy. But what if AI is so in-depth and so deep that 
it can tap into things that we didn't even comprehend were funny yet. Yeah. Which is what it will because it's artificial intelligence. But you can't replace instincts and time. I mean, can't. That's what I'm scared. Can't we? How long till we can't? Oh, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like how long? Like here we're saying it definitively. You can't replace instincts and timing and. But what the fuck, fuck do we in the know? world we live in now, I'm, yeah. I'm not so sure anymore, man. We never thought there was going to be uh, cars that could drive themselves, probably, or uh, right. computers that will just know what sort of porn you're into and pull it up for you. Well, think about it. Way back when, when movies started, do you think people were sitting there going, one day these are going to be in color, and we're going to be able to hear them talking? Wow. They probably sat there and went, no, are you? how could they make a movie talk? How could it be in color? And now look at us, man. Now, you know... That's what I mean. Holograms. The hologram of Tupac at Coachella well, that's a while what I'm back. Thinking. I'm thinking one day you're going to have a thing on your remote where you can press it and a hologram of you or me or any comedian. They or could watch Taylor this show, podcast in their living room. They huh? could drop on their living room. And not only that, I wouldn't be surprised if the holograms advance to the point where maybe they're dense. Maybe you can touch them. Maybe you can feel them. Maybe and they can touch us. you. People like a Patreon that can pay five bucks a month to like... To, to touch or, or... Get a or, deli hand job. <laughs> Fresh meat, sir. Coleslaw with that hand job, sir. What's your favorite? Oh, nice. Going into the Dumb and Dumber Cup voice. Is there a, do you have a favorite deli uh, item now that we're here? Yeah, the hand job on rye. How about that? Hand job through a bagel. How about that, guy? That's through my favorite hand job. My right. favorite deli treat. Well, just trying to make small talk. But what? Let's let's fast forward to the robots now because Tesla's like they, they got them now. They're starting to. They're sort of limited. They're walking around. But what is limited compared to fifty years ago, where we were still using calculators? Guess what's going to happen at some point? I was on a flight about two weeks ago, and my pilot hiccup burped into the microphone. Right? <coughs> Ooh, my bad. He said my bad after he threw up into his mouth Ooh, at ten forty uh, in the morning. Was a pilot, Linda Blair. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Fuck. I think I just popped a fat. That was a reverse queef. The queef of England right there is what that was, I must say. That fucking felt fucking right, that one did. All right then. Go ahead. Please pitch that cartoon. What? The queef of England. How do I pitch that one? I'm still trying to I'm pitch pop a fatty. <laughs> It's sold, trust me, in okay, the room. Okay, so you're on the plane. Someone's puking in the Pilot, cockpit. And in my head, I'm thinking, how much longer can humans get away with this type of stuff to where they don't go, hey, robots are driving cars. They're testing this. We're doing this. Robot pilots, would you be okay with it? I would not. How I don't come? <sighs> Think about it. Who's more corrupt? Who's more programmed to make a mistake? Who's more programmed? If a robot, what if I don't, human air... I don't know that. Well, I guess human error is based hmm. on lack of intelligence. I guess we're already using the robot, like the, they're using robots to drive the plane, right? Oh yeah, everything's computer. So if you have a robot that knows, I, but it's just, I guess it's also, yeah, I don't know. It's it's well here here's what it is. It's not it's not being familiar with that experience, right? So any sort of change like that, if I were to board the plane and have the robot go, have a good flight. There's plenty of diet sprite in the back for you to get. Do not smoke in the bathroom, but if you do, ee -oh, ee -oh, ee -oh, I won't say anything. By the way, if you smell something funny from the cockpit. <laughs> it's friction from robot sex. <laughs> Sorry, I had to finish it's, it for you. It's you, <laughs> you were hanging like fucking Meryl Streep on the edge of a fucking cornucopia crab <laughs> cruncher. Is that what she was doing there? Well, I just feel like the pilot might uh, come up short with uh, having all his buttons and wires dialed in, and, well, and, and it might cause uh, concern for the rest of the, uh, the Well, the here, here's the thing. If we go back to Elon Musk, you know, a, a few of the Tesla-like cars have malfunctioned, yeah. or they, 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 they have been involved in crashes where all the robotics, all the automation didn't work, and people are like, ah, Elon, see, it doesn't work, but then Elon was, okay, for every time a Tesla malfunctions and somebody dies or gets hurt... You pop a fatty. You pop a fatty and you pop a daddy. <laughs> but no, what he's saying is he's saying for every one that happens to a Tesla, 30,000 of them happen with a human. 
Oh, wow. Because humans make oh, mistakes. Wow. They make miscalculations. So, yes, a few of robots might, the robots yeah. fuck up <clears throat> along the way because of a glitch, but humans glitch way more consistently than right. a robot. And so I guess what I'm saying is how many plane crashes would we have with a human pilot versus... versus but think about it. In the last 20 years, maybe 15, and I'm these are just the two I can remember... <clears throat> I'll, I'll cite three. There was the Alaska airline plane that went down over the coast of California. Apparently, yeah. they said there might have been, the, the pilot might have nosedived it. Wow. There was the guy in Germany just a few years ago that, that took a full plane into the mountains. Oh, man. There was the, the guys in 9-11 yeah. that, that drove four planes into the ground and into buildings. Yeah. Now, so ro- that yeah. all came from... A human taking the controls or a human commandeering the controls. But if you have a locked cockpit and it's full of... Unless, whoop, whoop. I don't know if you can say that anymore. Well, I, I can. I can. Uh, <laughs> my priest told me I can. But anyways, I yeah. don't know the answer. But I, I think I think <laughs> when something's automated and programmed only to do one thing... I hear you. And there's no emotion. There's no... I, I think... Wow, you're taking emotion out of it. Statistically, yeah. over time... That becomes a safer uh, experience. Yeah. Wow. You're you're yeah. I didn't think about it like that because yeah, the the self driving like Ubers. There were some crashes with that, but it's like yeah. Well, how many human crashes are there? It's like the That's leading right. cause cause of death. What, what would be more at the end of the year? Robot crashes or human crashes and it would be humans it would be way more now would they have to start putting robot like you know secret shoppers almost like a a, a robot that's studying the plane and the people like. I guess robot hijackers. What if, what if that happened? That that's not beyond. That's the thing. That's terrifying. A- anything's probable. You know what I mean. They have to get yeah. the robot like accustomed to the plane experience, so they have to have a few of them ride. But then, like one of the robots, like fucking gets up and it's just like they ran out of toilet paper. Do you know what? You don't even need that. You ever not turn your airplane mode on? Oh yeah. I mean, just don't turn that on. You can probably take control of the jet. You know, that's what's scary because. You could have all this technology sitting up front, no pilots, automated airplane, and a, the modern day terrorist instead of a box cutter, he's on his cell phone and he's a, he's a tech guy and he's just pressing a few buttons and going fly into the Empire State Building in 20 minutes. Boop. You know? And then that becomes the whole wow. It it it's all it's all wow. It's weird. We're at, we're at the edge of of a really wild turning point with AI. And I think I read somewhere recently that that Elon Musk just within the last few days came out with a statement saying we must put the brakes on AI technology sure. right now because he's 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 at the top of the hill screaming danger danger. He's not saying stop AI, but what he's saying is let's have checks and balances before we throw it out into the ether. Oh, yeah, and, good call. Right now, everyone's it's just coming out on It's the new hot and, thing, yeah. And it's the hot thing until it it's totally takes over or, or changes everything. It's like when fake boobs first became a thing. Everybody wanted them. Oh, I got, I got to get rid of them. Dogs, mine. people, yeah. you know. Yeah. I had a girlfriend who got fake boobs put on her fake boobs. Go she on. had four. She used to when she when she motorboat me, it felt like a caterpillar was crawling across my face. A fat, blubbery caterpillar. Four boobs. Four boobs, and that was just at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, she had an udder. She had a fucking udder on her chest. Do you remember the first time you I saw? Mean, we couldn't shower without milk getting everywhere. Well, did you save money there? Well, and that's where I'm going to stop. <laughs> Would four? Here's the funny thing about four boobs. I don't think there's a dude out there that it would stop. Yeah, just make them hungrier. <laughs> yeah, so just make them hungrier. Yeah. Now, as a child, maybe if you're a child and you see four boobs, you're probably like, you're not yet conditioned to know that you might might enjoy these as an adult. If you're a child and your mother has four boobs, and she's chances like, are one. you're a puppy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you might be a redneck. You might be a puppy. If your mother has more than four boobs, you might be a puppy. The cleanest fox worthy of all time. If your father <laughs> cleans his asshole with his tongue, you might be a puppy. If you bark every time there's an Allstate commercial on TV that takes place at an animal shelter next to a Jamba Juice at a mall in Wisconsin, 
you, you might, might be, be a puppy. puppy. If you stand up pissing on a fire hydrant outside a Starbucks, you might be a puppy. If cats are the enemy, you, you might, might be, be a, a puppy. puppy. If your child, I lost it. If no. shit is your favorite thing to eat morning, noon, and night, you, you might, might be, be a German, a, a puppy. <laughs> Shit, sorry, dude. Whoa, Whoa. Someone pop a fatty. Can we pop a fatty? Someone, please. Oh, I go. can't do it. Wow. Yeah. You just finger fucked your face. I think you just gave yourself the shocker, dude. Are you okay? Hope it clears up that cough. God. The never ending shocker. <laughs> Rah. Suck my four hairy <laughs> boobs and a lady. <laughs> Great movie. You once, twice, <laughs> you three times a hairy boob. Three uh, men and four bo- hairy boobs. Starting right, Tom buddy. Selleck. We, Was that it? We, yeah. <laughs> We got it. We got to end on our favorite. Um, I don't want to end. This was the best. Can I tell a little story, please? <laughs> so Adam was here like a few weeks ago, yeah. and yours truly, because I'm sort of doing this all by myself. I fucked up something technically. Mm. We recorded a whole podcast. It's wonderful. I'm gonna say something though, buddy. Yeah. And you said it when you came to yeah. the to the studio today. Everything happens for a reason. Yep. I think this one is actually way better I than thought, the last one was great but yeah. this one is I'm we, not, we hit some way we hit some heavier topics the laughs were strong yeah i i felt more genuine uh connection i'll be honest the first time you yeah. felt a little distracted yeah you know i think you were thinking about popping fatties or uh um, well you know what happened rolling fatties. that was the first day i had ever done two back to back no so way I, i'd recorded with kevin nealon in the morning and that was <sighs> intense because we and so I was saying to to um, two pods friend, in a day is is a lot. And I didn't realize it, but it, it sort of it, it it sort of takes a lot of mental energy. Oh yeah. But that being said, it was still a great pod. But I technically something happened something with happened. the sound. Shit happens sometimes. By the way, too, you can check uh, all the uh, dots and cross the eyes, uh, whatever the saying yeah. is. But it's uh, yeah. This yeah. one felt this one felt fun. Oh man, what a laugh! But what we want to end with, buddy, is words from a wooden shoe. This is an official, authentic Dutch clog adam can back me up and what we do is you reach in pull out a word and see if there's a it inspires a story or a memory from your life guy i've heard that before whoa that's what she said it's going in deep right into the toe jam area it's not popcorn dude <laughs> jesus you don't any, look at them imagine a guy comes in with popcorn shoes well i feel like it right about now you want some butter in here jesus what do you got Take guy me to dinner first Whoa. What's your word? Sudden death. Oh. Wow. Oh. Does that uh, inspire or bring back any thoughts or memories? Sure. So when I was mm, 16. <clears throat> oh, God. The deli meat girl. She died. How big are you? Sorry, go ahead. Well, like your four boob story. Sorry, go ahead. I have a secondary wiener, which I know sounds like a Judy Bloom book, but um, or a Doctor Seuss book. <laughs> Let me tell you, Horton heard a lot that day. Yeah, here comes the double <laughs> knockerty talkerter. Okay, sudden, sudden death. death. That's a serious topic. What do you wow. get? Anything? Uh, well, what what sparks my brain when I think that is the the first car accident I was ever in yeah. that I survived. I've been in like three oh that were all like near death. And the first one was in Seattle and I was getting, uh, my buddy and I, Adam French, who you met at the wedding, big fan of yours. Um, he ge- geeked out big time, by the way, when he knew you were coming. And when you met him, when you walked up the hill to the wedding, by the way, and we talked about this last time real quick, Har walks up, to the uh it's a resort there's a golf course right next to the wedding venue and harlan goes geez great i've always wanted to get hit in the fucking head with a golf ball i see love happen <laughs> everyone dies laughing everyone's excited he's there and then i gave him a shout out during the uh um uh post uh dinner uh yeah, welcome at your wedding at my wedding yeah. and i was like this is great everyone's here harlan came up and i quoted your joke and it crushed uh should have let you do it so 
Adam French is sitting shotgun and we're driving to a movie and we pull up behind our buddy who's also going and uh, we decide to change theaters last minute and Adam French gets out of the car and uh, and runs up to tell my buddy, we're going to go to this theater instead because again, no cell phones. And oh. I go, uh, and then the light changes from red to green. So I go, just stay, just ride with our buddy Evan. So we drive, we pull up to the next uh, light and I'm following close behind them and I don't yield. And so I turn left and there's a, probably a big... I don't know the biggest truck you could think of. Oh, like, God. think of a of a Hyundai Elantra and times it by ten. Like a Mack truck. Type oh, of thing? huge! Eighteen yeah. wheeler. Oh yeah, big. Oh, Coming right at me, and I just freeze. I go into shock, and I grab the wheel, and I just close my eyes, and I I'm still rolling at that point. So I just quickly turned it. And instead of hitting me direct on, I was driving an 88 Chevy Spectrum. My mom, you know, somehow it was like 4,000 on this used car lot. My mom, I think Sally Field Force Gump, the guy down to like, you know, a thousand bucks. And uh, (laughs) her mom sure does care about your driving, son. And so I come out, my mom's like, you know, you know, and um, and she was drinking a Powerade. And she, um, and so I'm driving this car, it's a box. Truck hits me, should have just blown the car up. Yeah. T-bones instead of hitting dead on because I turned the car at the last minute. Yeah. T-bones, where Adam French would have been because he would have been riding shotgun, that guy would have been done. <sighs> it hits me, all the windows shatter. I'm holding onto the steering wheel. The crunch Whoa. was insane. And I get rocked back and kind of spin around. And then I like wake up and I was like, holy shit, I'm, like, I'm doing this. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Thought I was dead for a minute. Wow. And then I was just like, and then I literally like look out and the window's open and it's in front of an AMPM and I kid you not, homeless dude right outside the AMPM goes, man, you got fucked up. And that was the first thing I heard and I still thought I was dead and I was like, is this like, is there an AMPM and a homeless guy in heaven? Like I was right, so, right. Yeah. so in shock that I was just like, I swear to God, I was just like, hey, does heaven have an AMPM? Hey, probably. And the fucking this guy was maybe down there too and maybe he died or he's like, maybe, maybe heaven is just like, you know, a, a, a slightly better world i don't know hey open 24 hours a thousand percent so the sugar you can eat (laughs) yeah so you got fucked up and then i get out of the car and i start stumbling around and he goes man and then he and then the homeless guy starts to like break it down he goes man you were coming this way you took a left the truck goes boom the car fucking car blew up window shattered boom 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 everyone dude i'm still popping someone's popping a fatty in the a.m. p.m. bathroom this guy's uh, and this you know and this guy was you know like he was doing color like sports he was narrating the whole thing and he said whatever and it was just like, and I was hearing him just go off and then like an ambulance pulled up like out of nowhere. And then I just sit down and then somebody came up and they're like, dude, you guys sit down on the curb. You're like, that was crazy. You're so lucky. And, um, and then I remember, uh, my buddies being at the theater being like, Hey, where are you? And I was like, I don't think I'm going to make the movie. And then the homeless guys I'm on the phone goes, Hey man, tell your friends, you just almost got fucked up, man. This motherfucker looted death, baby. And he was just like going off and they're like, what's going on? I was like, I'm in front of an AMP. I fucking just got rammed or whatever. And, and they're like, who's that guy in the back? I was like, I don't know, but, but we live together now. Yeah. He's your guardian angel. That's my like guy. That. Yeah. So that's why I think I want to think of sudden death. Cause that's you know what's funny. I, I hearing that story, despite First of all, thank God you're alive. That's and terrifying. And thank God Adam French was not that. Oh, the, my God. The, the light. This is just life, though. The yeah. What happened in that moment where we go at the last second, let's go to this theater. Yeah. No phones. Go tell him. Go run up to the car and tell him. Light changes. Light doesn't change because it was momentary. Yeah. He ran up to the car, knocked on the window. Hey, we're going to the theater. And then it would be like, cool, run back. And light changes. And, I, and for me, just to go, dude, otherwise... Crazy man. Little fractions of my time. life is so different going, if that going happens. Going right or going left makes the difference. Yeah. That, that's how that's how precious and delicate life is, and you always got to remember that. Thank God. What were you man. gonna say though? I was gonna say just just hearing the story outside of it. You know, I don't, I don't know how much you believe in the spirit world or angels or things like that. But even though this guy was sort of crazy, the homeless guy, there's something in my head where. As you're telling it, I, I wonder if he was some kind of a spirit that was sitting there that was sort of, not that he helped you in any way, but it, well, he, it he did interesting. No, he did know? help me, I'd say, because he definitely, like, it It was an immediate, otherwise I'm just listening, I, I'm just walking around. It was. It brought me back down to, I guess. Right, maybe to, he was a voice to help pull you back. And or, to tell me that, like, it was how much, how crazy it was that I survived that made me, gave me an immediate, like, I'm okay, almost. Because I was definitely, like, floating around, like, 
and I'm looking at the car and I'm just like, and the girl went to my high school who was driving the truck and she got out immediately, was like sobbing. And he was like, you fucking bitch, learn how to drive, bitch. You know, and, and, uh, <laughs> you know what? I just had another thought. What if, what if this was an inspirational moment for him and he saw life flash before his eyes and, and later on when the dust cleared, he just went, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Look how, look how fleeting life is. Well, I didn't finish the story. That guy was Morgan Freeman. Are you serious? Yeah. Better get busy living or get busy dying. <laughs> get rich, die trying. 50 Cent said that, but I lived that. No, he goes, every AM, PM in heaven is open 24 hours. <laughs> he goes, he goes, <laughs> you either get busy living or get busy dying. That's what it is, yeah. And chicken strips are 50 cents each in the AM, PM. I'm Morgan Freeman, and I approve this message. And this is Adam Ray. This is the Harland Highway. Before we go, buddy, yeah. tell the gang where they can see you, your website. Your, go see him do stand-up. And Guys, tell them. I'll be at Red Rocks uh, with Jay Farrell and Chelsea Handler May 10th. I'll be in Atlanta at the Punchline May 18th through wow. the 20th. And then Palm Beach, Chicago, Boston, uh, uh, Portland, uh, uh, Phoenix, AdamRayComedy.com for tickets and uh, my podcast, which Har's been on yeah. maybe 12 times about last night. Check it out yeah. on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and um, and come out and see me. And, um, and um, Papa Fatty. Good night, everybody. Go see him. <laughs> Go check out his podcast about last night. Adam's fantastic. Buddy, thank you for being here. Har, I love you. We did it. Love you. We yeah. did it. Uh, let's make sure it works before <laughs> we say anything. Yeah. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, chicken chow mein. And don't forget to what? Papa Fatty. <laughs>